Hey everybody, Jilly here. Another week comes and let's pray it's a better Instagram live this week. I'm Jilly from Baby Sleep Made Simple. Welcome. Every Monday I answer your questions about your baby and toddler sleep. Hopefully you missed last Monday because it was a disaster. I had, I'm like trying to fix my, my pillow. Um, I had major Wi-Fi issues and I also had my daughter's school bus calling repeatedly so I like kept cutting off the call. So if you guys were here last week, I'm really, really sorry. Hopefully you got a good laugh out of my Instagram live, but I promise no disruptions this week. So um, if you're new to us, welcome. All you have to do is either just sit back enjoy a cup of coffee and get some baby sleep tips. Or if you have specific things that you're struggling with, let me know. Just drop it here in the comments and I will give you some baby sleep advice. If I've got a guide on my website, I'll point you in that direction um, because my guides are you know, quite detailed. They walk you through what to do. Um, yeah, that's about it. I am going to try to get you as many questions as I can because I feel bad leaving so many people high and dry last week, but hopefully you guys got the help that you needed. So let me know anything that you're struggling with, with your baby, with your toddler, with your preschooler. Um, <laughs> oh no, oh no, not more problems. Um, hey Crystal, Crystal's already laughing at me. Not a good sign. Let me fix my very professional setup here. Okay. Let's hope that sticks. Um, all right guys, so hit me up. We have about nearly an hour to answer all your questions. So let me know anything that you're struggling with or that you'd like some clarity on. Kathleen has the first question. Hey, Kathleen, some crazy hairs. Um, my four and a half month old falls asleep independently. That's awesome. But she has been sleeping poorly because she's rolling over in her crib so much. Sometimes she's happy on her belly, sometimes not. Any advice? Yeah, Kathleen, this is such a normal phase. Super frustrating and tired when you're in the middle and tiring when you're in the middle of it, but it's completely normal. She just has to learn to get comfortable in her crib in many positions. As she gets a little bit older and you know her mobility is just you know really advanced, she'll be able to roll from her back to her side to her tummy and sleep in any position or get herself in any position that she likes um, with ease and not you know complaining about it. But in the beginning, it's normal for babies to roll around and either they get stuck and they're not happy about it or they just roll around and they're just not happy about it. So I um, I have a guide on my website and it's about little ones who sit up or stand in the crib and won't sleep. But you really could, I should expand that guide to include rolling. You really can use the same tips for rolling. Basically, if your little one's doing anything other than crying, you wanna leave her as long as possible so she gets comfortable maneuvering around the crib on her own so that this phase passes. If she's really, really upset, I would still let it go like a few minutes. Then I would gently roll her back, try to like keep her there for a few minutes, you know, comfort her and then leave. If she immediately rolls back, then I would still give her time because unfortunately it becomes this little bit of a, like a, an unconscious habit where she keeps rolling and needing your help. Um, she's been sleeping poorly because she's rolling so much. Sometimes she's not happy. Some, sometimes she's happy. Sometimes she's not. I would really just try to wait it out as much as you can because ideally you know, the more you do that, the quicker she gets used to it. Um, of course, continue doing tummy time during the day so she's really, really comfortable and strong on her tummy. You could have her practice practice rolling on the floor during the day. You could put her in the crib and have her practice rolling in the crib when she's awake just to get really, really comfortable with it. And then it's sometimes a few days, maybe a week or two where little ones finally just kind of get over it and stop waking in the night from rolling around so much. But she just has to get comfortable doing it. So avoid fixing her really, really frequently because that's just gonna slow down her natural um, progression of learning this. Okay, I hope that was a bit rusty for my first question, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope that made sense, Kathleen. Wait it out as much as possible. If you have to roll her back, roll her back, but if she rolls straight away, give her time. Aurora, hi, Jilly. We're starting to go out on weekends. That's awesome, but my 11 month old won't nap in the stroller. Since we've been inside the house for so long, my baby's only used to napping in his bed. Any advice? This is a really great question. And I know we talked about talking about it on social media and we really are. I'm pretty much in the same boat with you. My little guy's turning 11 months this week and he's the same. And so I'm just like, you know, it's okay. Most of the days we're home for naps. So it's great that he naps well at home. Um, what I would say is It 
It's really important for all of us to get out, to change things up, to have breaks in our typical routine, but for our parents, for babies, it's really, really good for all of us. So don't skip out on any weekend plans out of fear that your little one's not gonna nap well. Just go with the flow. So what I would do Aurora is I would start small. I would start with like one half day on the weekend, right? So like if you know you're gonna miss your little ones, um, afternoon nap, if you're invited to do something in the afternoon, it's right at their nap time, then just say, that's okay. What we'll do is we'll make sure we have a good nap at home in the morning so little one's well rested. Then we're gonna go and we're gonna wing it. When it comes to be little one's nap time, we're gonna try our hardest to have him nap in the stroller. We're gonna try our hardest to have him nap in the car, maybe the baby carrier, whatever works. And we're we're gonna be prepared for him, you know, to not take a nap at all. And that's okay because the important thing is we got what we needed, we got out, we got to socialize, or we got fresh air, change the scenery, whatever it is. And we can always get home early, have an early bedtime, and start fresh tomorrow. Like I wouldn't suggest that parents start having one nap every single day while out, right? We wanna start small. So like a half day on a weekend is fine. And if your little one just doesn't nap or fights it or cries the whole time, you know, that's fine. Once you get home, have an early bedtime and start fresh the next day. Um, you, there are products that you can get to kind of help. Like if your little one's used to napping in a bedroom with white noise and a blacked out bedroom, you can get what's called like a snooze shade. You can find them on Amazon. They also have their own website. Um, and it's basically a, you know, a blackout cover for your little one's stroller. And I have a lot of clients. I've been recommending them for years and have a lot of clients that use them and really, really, really like them. Um, they do let the, I don't want the window to slam. It's a beautiful windy day here, but I don't want the window to slam. They do obviously let the air in. Little ones don't overheat. Let's, it lets um, air come in and out. So a lot of people love it. So you can check out the snooze shade if you think this is gonna become a regular habit. You would like it to become a regular habit, like one every Saturday you wanna get out. Definitely check that out. That can really help. Some parents even, especially for younger babies, but you never know, some parents even get small portable white noise like shushers or machines, like these really small ones, and they'll put it in a little one's stroller and they put the black out and they'll just go for a walk. Now, it may take 10 minutes for your little one to get used to like moving around. They may not understand why all of a sudden everything is blacked out, but give it a good 10 minutes of strolling and hopefully your little one will fall asleep. You may have to keep walking the whole time for them to stroll, but you know, a lot of parents are up for that if it's a change from their norm. Um, so I would start there, or if it's gonna be morning plans, then do your best to have your little one nap, but plan to be home in the afternoon for them to have like a good crib nap at home in their usual space. So I would start small with like a half day on a weekend. I would see how that goes. I would even give it a few shots, like try three Saturdays in a row. Hopefully by the second or third time, your little one will take at least enough of a nap to where you're like, that was fun. Now we can plan something every weekend. And you know, I think especially coming out of what we've been going through in 2020 and coming out of lockdown, some places are going back into lockdown. If, if you guys feel like we need to really take advantage of being able to get out right now, then I fully encourage it. You know, we have to balance our little ones need to sleep with also the family's, you know, emotional health, mental health. So I think it's completely fine, Aurora. Um, if the stroller's just not gonna happen, just see if the car will work. The car often works, especially if you push it a little bit. So if it's like an afternoon nap, and your little one didn't nap in the stroller, but now they're about 30 minutes overdue for their nap, maybe even an hour. I'm pretty sure if you went for a drive and you just kept driving that they would eventually fall asleep for some point in time. I mean, there are little ones that just refuse the car seat. My little one went through that phase, but then we had to keep driving at, you know, every few days. And so he got used to it. And if it's like, if I've pushed his awake times, he will nap in the car. So you could also just try that and plan to drive around nap time. And I'm sure after a few tries, one of those will work. Um, Good luck and let us know how it goes because you know you've given me a really good idea. Um, I think we'll talk about this on social media soon. All right, good luck. Swift Eagle, hi, my son makes himself throw up if I leave the room or even if dad comes to put him back down. If I wean totally and he throws up for dad, I assume this is, then should he give him sips with milk or just water? So this is in sleep training, he's vomiting. Oh, poor guy. I mean, normally, Swift Eagle, normally what I recommend when parents come to me and they say, you know, we've tried uh, Cry It Out or we've tried Ferber and our little one has vomited once or a few times, there's a few um, things that we do. The first thing you want to do is you, you want, if you're talking about bedtime, if your little one has recently fed. So at bedtime, our little one's like, they've had dinner recently and they usually had a bottle or a breastfeed 
And then within 15 minutes, we put them in the crib to fall asleep on their own. And if your little one gets so upset, and if they're the kind of little one that coughs and vomits, then if there's anything fresh in their tummy, they're gonna vomit it up. So the first uh, tip that I have is to move feeds earlier. So you can have dinner at the same time, but you don't wanna have any bottle feeds or breast feeds basically in your bedtime routine. You wanna make sure all your little one's nutrition comes before you start the bedtime routine. Because your bedtime routine is gonna be 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe longer. So you really wanna have time for them to, process, to digest their food in their stomach. Um, the second recommendation I have is more than likely you're going to need to slow down sleep training. So my guess is you've been doing something like Ferber where you say you leave the room and maybe you're coming back, maybe you're doing extinction where you don't come back. Whatever you're doing, let's slow it down. So if you were doing extinction and not coming back, then I recommend you come and check in on your little one every few minutes. If you were doing Ferber and coming back like every 15 minutes, shorten up your intervals. Do them like every three to five minutes the first night or two to get your little one used to you coming back to give reassurance. That can really, really help. If your little one continues to get sick, then you may need to choose a sleep training method where you stay with them. So maybe you leaving the room is just too much. They just can't handle it right now, and that's perfectly fine. So instead, do something like camping out where you're sitting in a chair quietly next to the crib for a few nights to get them used to falling asleep in a new way, but still with you right there. So those are the normal recommendations we give if little ones are vomiting during sleep training. Um, so if you leave the room or if dad comes in, he vomits. So dad may have to take a back seat on this if that's how, you know, if you, how your little one is responding. And then maybe you do something like camping out the first few nights to get him used to falling asleep in his crib with you there. And then once he like breaks through that habit and is actually falling asleep in his crib, even with you giving assistance, then hopefully dad can come in and you guys can like replace each other. And then you can work doing the same uh, method. I wouldn't give him a bottle. I wouldn't give him milk. I wouldn't even give him water if he's shown that he vomits. If you know he's been fed recently, you know, he shouldn't be hungry. He shouldn't be thirsty. So I actually wouldn't feed him. Now, excuse me, if it's the middle of the night um, and he's due for a feed, then yeah, you're going to have to go ahead and feed him. Try to keep him upright to get a burp. And then I would really try a gentle method during the night because you don't want to wait 30 minutes before you start your sleep training steps. Um, but if you're trying to wean him off of all night feeds in general, then I wouldn't offer um anything. I wouldn't offer any milk in a bottle, even if it's dad. I wouldn't offer water. Um, you don't want to just put like fresh milk in his tummy only for him to vomit up. Um, if you want to hop on over to babysleepmadesimple.com, there's a guide on my website called Sleep Training Methods Explained. Um, you can find it in the baby section and the toddler section, and it kind of walks you through a few options for um, sleep training methods. You might find that to be helpful. All right, good luck. Say, Tay, advice on how to get my 10 month old to sleep through the night and not wake for a 4 to 5 a.m. feed would be great. Sure. First of all, make sure your doctor says it's okay that your little one can go 11 to 12 hours straight without feeding. And if you get the permission to do that, then basically um, we have a rule in our program 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. <laughs> 21 Days to Peace and Crying. 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. Um, any waking before 6 a.m. is considered a night waking. So if you have decided, that we're gonna win off of all night feeds. And that means that any waking before 6 a.m. will not result in a feed, because that would be a night feed. So really what you have to do, and obviously we fine tune this in the program, with like if we're working with clients, you know, there's things you can do during the day. I wanna double check that your baby's bedtime is okay and all that, but let's just say your little one's going to sleep at like 7 p.m. So, you know, they should not really be up for the day before 6 a.m. Um, then what you wanna do is you just wanna do whatever sleep training method you are using. Uh, you have to use it for every single waking before 6 a.m. and you don't offer a night feed. So a lot of parents will say, my little one's falling asleep on their own at bedtime and sleeping through, it's amazing, but they're waking up at 4.30, 5, 5.15, and then it's really hard to get them back to sleep. Well, I to them I respond, that's still a night waking. Treat it the exact same way you would treat it as if it were midnight. So you're gonna do the exact same sleep training steps you're gonna do at midnight or at 2 a.m. to get them back to sleep when they wake before six o'clock. I mean, especially at four guys, 4 a.m. It's not the morning. It's not the morning. So it's really just us leading the way and our consistency that gets our little ones sleeping till six o'clock. Um, if you want to hop on my website and check out my sleep training guide for 10 month olds, it gives you specifics of what you can be doing during the day and how to set up your little one's daily schedule to make sure you're setting them up to sleep great at night. Cause that can make a big difference. It could just be a schedule tweak that sorts this out for you. Um, but once you know you're doing all the steps, then it really is a matter of sleep training from bedtime all the way through to 6 a.m. earliest. Um, okay, I hope that answers your question. Souk Preet, my six-month-old is always waking at 5 a.m. She sleeps and naps 
independently and doesn't have a night feed anymore. Help, it's so tiring. It is so, 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 so tiring. Um, again, it's, it's, I would say the same thing, super, super great. Hop on over to my website, check out my uh, sleep training guide for six month olds. Now, if your six month old is going to sleep in the 6 p.m. hour, then waking up 11 hours later at 5 a.m. is not so incredible. Do you know what I mean? Like, we can expect our little ones to sleep 11 to 12 hours straight at night. So there are many times that we do recommend 6 p.m. bedtimes. Like, I know this, but we also know that then if our little one sleeps through the night until 5.30 in the morning, like, it's not so outrageous because they've slept for 11 and a half hours. So what we do, like, for instance, for the clients in our group, if we get a message like this, we say, what's your daily schedule? So if you show us your daily schedule, what we're looking for, we wanna make sure that your six month old is getting um, two to three naps a day for a total of two to three hours. So not more than three hours of napping, not less than two hours. We wanna make sure our wake times always stay within a two to three hour range, okay? So once we know that that's ro like rolling and doing really well, your little one's sleeping independently, that's a huge step. Now we're gonna look at what bedtime is. If bedtime is before 7 p.m., then we can try our hardest, but some little ones aren't gonna yet sleep 12 hours straight at night at six months old. So maybe we're gonna work on shifting your schedule so your little can have a little bit of a later bedtime so they can ideally wake up later in the morning. Um, for sure, Supri, you also wanna check out the guide on my website, how to stop your baby waking at 5 a.m. And it lists all of the tips, I think it's about nine tips. You go through each and every one of them, make sure you're doing each and every one of them. There could be one or two things where you're like, oh, you know, we've been getting out of the bed and feeding at 5 a.m. We've been starting the day at 5 a.m. So maybe my little one's body clock is used to it. So let me work on that. Or let me tweak bedtime. Or let me do this and this and this and this. Um, have a look at both of those guides, both six months old and baby working early guide. And I'm sure you'll find one or two things that you can work on um, to get your little one sleeping a little bit later in the morning. All right. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Francis P. Jones, been trying for the past 40 minutes to get baby to nap. Oh, I feel ya. She only had eight and a half hours of broken sleep last night. She was asleep but woke as I put her in the cot. I hate that. Look, if you had a really, really bad night, you just, you just do the best you can today. I don't know how old your little one is, but what I would do if my little one had a really, really rough night, and my little one did have a rough night last week. He got a bit of a cold, and oh, I think it was Wednesday night. Oh, we were up a lot. So once we finally got up the next day, it's like, okay, I know that he's going to need to have some naps to compensate for, you know, last night. And I'm going to make sure I stay with recommended awake times, depending on your little one's age. I'm going to make sure my little one gets at least two hours of total daytime sleep up to three. You could go to three and a half since you had only eight and a half hours of sleep at night. And then we're going to start fresh. We're going to start fresh at bedtime. So Francis, hop on over to babysleepmadesimple.com. Click your little one's age in the top menu and you can get the corresponding guide. I have a guide for every age, for every month of your little one's first year, and then a one-year-old guide, a two-year-old guide. So it gives you specific tips. Don't let your little one crash out for four hours today, for instance, for naps. Do the best you can to get enough sleep and then start fresh at bedtime. Um, now you've been trying to get him or her, he, she. You've been trying to get her to nap for 40 minutes. So I don't know, I don't know if you're entering a sleep regression. I don't know if your little one might be sick. If you suspect something really is off, you could get their ears checked. Cause that can like, if your little one's sleep suddenly falls apart, yours can often be to blame. Um, but if you're like, no, we just have a crappy sleeper, then hop on over to my website, find your age appropriate guide and start there with those tips. And a few days of consistently following those tips will see your little one sleep improve. If your little one is five months or older, you can consider joining us in 21 Days to Peace and Quiet, where we walk you through everything, all the steps of sleep training to get your little one sleeping through the night amazingly and napping well. Um, and you can find that if you click the link in, in my bio. But hang in there today. Give yourself grace. Have a, have a nap for yourself, hopefully, if possible. And just do the best you can today and start fresh tonight at bedtime. Okay, good luck. Millie. Hi, Jilly. My Timothal started to catnap. He falls asleep on his own and sleeps around three hours a day. And awake time is three and a half hours. Extend awake times or a regression? Um, if you're coming into 11 months, some little ones can have a nap specific regression at 11 months. So that could be... Um, an explanation. If your awake times are all three and a half hours, you may find that extending awake times like doesn't add up. It's going to push bedtime too late. Well, he started to catnap, but then he said he sleeps around three hours a day, so he probably used to sleep three hours a day, but now he's catnapping. I probably at ten months old, I would go with awake times of like two and a half, maybe three hours in the morning, 
three hours between naps and then three and a half hours before bedtime, maybe four. But it really depends on how they nap. If they have long naps, you may find four hours is too long. It pushes bedtime too late. But if your little one has started to cat nap, I really would just, if you had a schedule that was working really well before this, I actually would stick with it. We don't see a jump in awake times usually at 10 months old. Usually it's just like a developmental blip. Like I said, if they're coming into their 11th month, there can be a nap specific regression where this is totally normal. And we just ride it out for one to two weeks and the little ones do go back to napping well. Um, uh, so I probably wouldn't push awake times past three and a half hours, especially during the day before naps. I would just get my little one outside before every nap. So before the morning nap, before the afternoon nap, at least 30 minutes, a stroll around the neighborhood, go to the local park, playing outside in the garden or the yard or the balcony, just getting outside can really, really, really help our little one settle down to sleep um, and sticking with whatever was working before. And I'm sure your little one will bounce back um, pretty soon. Okay, I hope that helps. Crystal, little one is 14 months. Most sleep issues are in check. Yay, thank you. On Sundays, we attend church. Church starts right at the a.m. nap. Should we skip the a.m. nap or push the nap earlier for him? First nap is one hour. Right, because you have a 14-month-old. When parents have a regular commitment like church once a week, what I'll sometimes say is, if you're super organized and really, really love that nap time, what you could do on Sundays is wake your little one up like an hour earlier than normal. Some parents are like, what, on a Sunday? But bear with me. It's because the idea is you have the one hour nap at home an hour earlier and then you go to church. So maybe it had to be like an hour, 20 minutes, like depending on how long it takes you to drive to church, right? Um, so some parents will do that. If they have a regular commitment, they'll wake their little one up that one day a week, like an hour earlier to have the nap at home. The other option is, I don't know how long church lasts, probably not more than an hour, right? Although it could be longer, it could be two. I mean, it depends. If you can, like, let's say the nap was due at 10. If you can have them napping at 11, like in the car on the way home, ideally for an hour if possible, then I would do that. But if they're not gonna be able to realistically nap for like two hours later, so if the naps normally do at 10 and you're like, no, there's no way we could even get them to nap before 12, we're not done with church at 12, that's probably a bit of a stretch. So in that case, you may wanna wake them up earlier and let them have at least like a 45 minute nap on church days, wake them up, take them to church, and then have a better afternoon nap. But if you think you can delay the nap by just an hour and have them asleep either at home or in the car driving around for at least 45 minutes, then you could do that. So it kind of depends on how long church goes um that can give you a good idea but i think once a week is fine and you know within i suspect within two months your little one's going to transition to one nap so this is really a short-term issue so you could do whichever one you think um might work better and i'm really happy your little one's sleeping great Horia, my seven month old is going through sleep regression i'm going mad she was sleeping through the night but is now waking up should i be feeding her at night no if she has been sleeping through the night without needing to feed i would not rush to feed her at night Hop on over to my website and check out my seven month sleep regression guide. It was written just for you. It's gonna walk you through what the heck is going on and how you can get your little one sleeping as well as possible right now and get their sleep back on track. Hang in there, try your hardest to not resort to night feeds. It's okay to give like a bit extra comfort in the night if you can, if that can help you avoid adding in feeds only because then you know you have to go through night weaning again. Um, if you suspect your little one really is hungry in the night, you can give a feed that night, but the next day really focus on their daytime nutrition, feeding them as often, you know, every two to three hours. And then the next night I would try to not uh, have a night feed. I mean, our little ones can obviously go through growth spurs and be hungry in the night, but just be a little bit cautious. Um, feed them that night if they seem really, really hungry, but have a plan to handle it the next day and the next night. And check out my seven monthly progression guide because that's going to give you lots of tips as well. Lisa Lichko, early morning wake-ups for my recently turned six-month-old. He'd be keeping her in the crib till 6.45 and her first nap is at 8.45 and two and a half wake windows after that. That sounds good, Lisa. Um, hop on over to babysleepmadesimple.com and check out my baby waking early guide. Um, two six-month-olds waking early. This could be a bit of a trend. Um, between the months of six to nine, when little ones are ready to drop the third nap, sometimes this manifests as early wakings. So if your little one was like eight or nine months and sleeping through the night, I would be like, drop that third nap. Six month old, I don't rush to drop the third nap. And it depends on if they're sleeping through the night yet or not. Um, 
For sure, Lisa, I don't know where you are on the sleep training journey yet, but for sure, if you haven't yet gotten your little one sleeping independently or sleeping through the night, I would work on that because that fixes so many sleep issues. So you can check out my six month old sleep training guide on my website, as well as the baby waking early guide. Those two guides are gonna give you enough tips that you can like write them down and be like, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start right now. We're gonna give it a week and we're gonna see how much we improve. So it kind of depends on where you are. For sure, you need to be working toward like independent sleep, sleep training. Sounds like you're following awake times, which is awesome. It all works together, daytime sleep and nighttime sleep. Um, and then give it a good week following the tips, okay? And let us know if you need any more help. A.M. Mitchell, Owlet Sock says four month old is only getting seven to eight hours of sleep a night, even though she's in her crib 11 hours. Hmm. Woke up twice to feed. Do we do we need more daytime sleep to compensate? I don't know if I would trust the outlet. Only because that's like four, three to four hours just saying that your little one's not sleeping that you wouldn't be aware of. I would be quite surprised. Do you have any idea? Like uh, you have a monitor too, I assume. Um, do you have any indication that your little one's up all those extra hours at night? As a neonatal intensive care nurse, we learned that machines and monitoring obviously can be vital and life-saving, but we have to, we never just always trusted a machine. We always check the patient, <laughs> you know? So we always check the little one. So what I'm saying is like, if I thought my little one was in the bed sleeping for 11 hours, apart from two quick night feeds and the owlet was telling me my little one slept seven hours, I would be skeptical. I would be going, hmm, does it tell you the times? Like if so, if it seems to be around the same time, you could like pay attention to that. If you have a monitor, you know, make, make sure you have a monitor for a few nights and see if you're woken up in the night hearing your little one at least moving around or making noises. And if you never did, I'd be a little bit surprised to be honest. So I don't know, and I don't, I'm not really, I never used the outlet for that reason because I was like a neonatal nurse and I know a lot of parents love it. Um, so, I would just be a little bit skeptical and I do a little bit more research, but if you were pretty much convinced that your little one was sleeping more than that, then I'd probably go with that. Um, and I wouldn't start giving more naps necessarily when you're a four month old. You can check out my four month old sleep guides on my website. Send me, send, send me a message and let me know more about it. Do they give you like graphs or analytics? Like what do they give you to show you that your little one didn't sleep that much? And is your little one like exhausted during the day? Like, is there anything to back this up? Um, you can let me know and you can say, I talked about this with Julie on the live call and then my team will let me know if you DM, okay? Um, yeah, but I wouldn't just take it at face value and go, we need more naps today. I would be watching my little one. Is she really, really exhausted? Do I suspect she's up that much in the night? And then I would make my plan. Owlette. Maybe we'll talk about the owlette as well. Okay, next question. Is from Leah Holder Green. Hi, should I feed baby girl almost four months right before starting her bedtime routine? Congratulations on your little one. Um, what what we do, Leah, if you haven't yet checked it out, I encourage you to click the link here in my Instagram bio and check out my free Exhausted Mom Survival Kit. It's all about bedtime and how you can turn bedtime into a sweet and relaxing time to connect with your little one, but also exactly like what to do and in what order at bedtime. And so we talk about when to feed in your little one's bedtime routine. For sure, you wanna feed your little one, you know, as sleep is approaching so you can fill them up so they can ideally sleep longer. Um, and the survival kit walks you through all of those steps and explains it all. So I would check that out, but yes, for sure. I mean, if you're not feeding her in her bedtime routine, then for sure you're, want, you're going to want to feed her right before it starts. But the survival kit explains so much more and how you can really set her up to sleep great at night by what you do in the hour before bedtime. So make sure to check that out. Um, and if you have any questions, let us know. Rusu, my eight month old baby wakes up three hours in the night for a bottle of milk. It's a habit, what can I do? Um, well, you can start to wean it. You can give an ounce less every night. You know, like if your little one's having seven ounces, give six ounces tonight five ounces tomorrow, four ounces the next. When you get down to about two ounces, I wouldn't give any more because it's a tease. And instead you can offer water for a night or two. And then that's it. You've done a wean off of the milk. Um, some parents switch straight to water straight away to get, if they want like a quicker transition off of feeding. Um, you can certainly do that. Um, but what's just as important, Rusu, is making sure your little one knows how to resettle themselves in the night if they wake up. 
So I often combine night weaning with sleep training for that very reason. Otherwise, you're just like taking away the feeding, but you're still gonna have to help your little one fall back asleep by holding, rocking, singing, shushing, whatever it is. So I would combine the two. So if you haven't yet done that, like you can start sleep training, you can join us in 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. The link is in my bio. Um, and you can combine that with night weaning. That's what we normally do in our program because otherwise it kind of just prolongs the whole process. Um, yeah, but you could also try to do that gentle wean off of uh, milk as well. Good luck. TNQ is back. Hi, Jilly. We are back to four to five feedings at night. Crying, wanting me to stay in the room. Five and a half month old. Past the regression. Used to do one to two feeds. A few night sleeps were 10 hours straight. Just changed to three naps now. Help. Thank you. So four to five feedings a night is a lot. I mean... Like, I only want five feedings a night if you just brought your baby <laughs> from the hospital as a newborn. Um, so, I think it's time for sleep training. you got a five and a half month old. They're waking up this much at night. It, sometimes it gets to the point where it's like, there's nothing else that we can do but fix this. Like, nothing's working. They're waking up. Like, we know four or five times feeding at night is too much. And they're probably eating a bit less during the day. Or maybe they're wanting to sleep too much during the day. Like, we have to do something, take an active step to get the little one's sleep on track. So Tian, I say it's time for sleep training for sure. Your little one's definitely old enough. You can choose a slower, gentler method um, to get your little one adapting. And five months can be a really, really good age. A lot of parents find that their five month old responds a lot easier than older kids. I mean, obviously that's like a general statement, but you know, it's enough for me to say it. So you can go as slow as you want, but at five months, your little one is ready. They can learn to settle themselves to sleep and to sleep, maybe hold on to one night feed, maybe two max. Um, and you're always on our Instagram live, so I know you know the deal. You're more than welcome to join us in 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. We would love to work with you. Um, you can check out my five month old sleep training guide and start fresh with that. It's on the website, uh, but it's definitely time. I think when, it, when you get to this point, it's like there's nothing else we can do other than fix our little one's sleep. So I recommend you start sleep training because it's definitely gonna fix it for you. Good luck. Amanda Catherine, hi Jillian. I'm really trying to get my baby to sleep in her crib. We co-sleep, she's nine months. She wakes every two hours or less ever since she was born. I can't get her to sleep without nursing. I know she's learned to do it and there's nothing wrong with that, but there comes a point, especially for older babies, like a nine month old where we parents are like, you don't need to eat like a newborn every, every few hours and it's time to get in your crib. And although it can feel like the weight of the world is on you trying to get your co-sleeping baby to accept sleeping in the crib, you know, what I always advise is like, just think of how you want these next few years to go. I mean, your little one can sleep in the crib till like two and a half, maybe even three and a half. So we're talking like two more years, two and a half more years of like blissful sleep where your little one is safely contained in a crib and you can sleep peacefully knowing that, that they're going to be safe, basically. Um, I shared a bed with my daughter, you know, and it got to the point where I just wasn't sleeping because she was so active and rolling around and she did roll off the bed twice, I think. I just said, you know, enough is enough. This is like six years ago. Enough is enough. It's where baby sleep made simple came, came from. And, you know, I got her to accept the crib. So all that to being said, Amanda, Catherine, if you want to hop over, if you go to my Facebook page, you can actually search it. So I advise you to go to my Facebook page and on there you can do like a search somewhere you find a little thing um, and do it for co-sleeping to crib. And we did a whole post on how to get your co-sleeping baby to accept sleeping in the crib. So you can follow those tips. I mean, obviously there's the cold turkey where you put them in the crib, but I'm guessing you don't want that because you don't really need advice for that. So instead in that post, we give examples of how you can have the next few nights laid out to get her to slowly stop sleeping like this next to you and to kind of, you guys break your dependence on each other and then you move her into the crib. You can share a room with her. You can eventually move her crib into her own bedroom, um, whatever whatever you wanna do. Um, I do recommend that you start sleep training as well because otherwise, like I said with night weaning, it's like if we want our little ones to start sleeping in the crib, the quickest way to get there is to get teach them how to fall asleep on their own and settle themselves when they wake at night, which a nine month old can totally do. If you try to say, well, I'll just rock her to sleep every time she wakes, you can do that. Like this can be an interim step, but you always want to be moving toward independent sleep because that is the future. That's what's going to get your little one sleeping well, you know, for years and years and years. So I would encourage you, even if you look at my social media posts and you start doing those steps to distance yourself from your little one during sleep, make sure you begin sleep training on like, 
I would do it on like day four or five. You got the momentum going and it's time to teach your little one how to sleep independently and on their own. And they can do it. <laughs> There's so many parents I work with that are like, I could not believe my baby was on me for nine months, like on me, on me. And now is happily sleeping in a crib in their room all night long. So it can totally happen, Amanda. Uh, you can reach out to us if you want some more help. If you want to join us in the program, we'd love to have you. Plenty of co-sleeping uh, parents that join and get the little one sleeping in the crib. But check out my social media posts as well. I hope that helps. Olympia, how long before nap time should I start settling my baby and putting her in the crib? Great, great, great question. In general, about 15 minutes before the nap is due. So if your nap's due at two o'clock at 1.45, I'd be going into baby's bedroom to do a little miniature bedtime routine. Um, I go in, I would have fed my baby before in a different room, go in, change your diaper, make sure they just have some comfortable clothes. I don't just have to be pajamas, but loose and comfy cotton clothing, um, sleep sack if appropriate given the weather, um, you know, white noise, maybe read one book and then into the crib. So about 15 minutes. If you haven't yet, if your little one's still struggling with naps and takes like 30 minutes to fall asleep for naps, obviously you need to start 30 minutes earlier, but in general, about 15 minutes earlier, especially for babies who fall asleep on their own. Fatuma Z, my baby is two months and three weeks. Congratulations. She has colic at night. Most of the time, she also wants to play at night. What to do? Well, what I think you should do is hop on over to babysleepmansimple.com and check out my two month old sleep guide. It's got a lot of specific tips for you to get your two month old sleeping well. And a crucial part of getting two month old sleeping well is helping them learn the difference between day and night. At two months old, we do expect your baby to be awake for the majority of the day. Of course, they're gonna to need to nap probably four hours during the day, maybe five. But for the rest of the time they're awake and at night for two month old can be nine, 10 or 11 hours. We do expect that they are in a dark bedroom, you know, in their crib and spending the majority of that time sleeping. Of course, they have to wake up to have some feeds, maybe three feeds at this age, but otherwise they're not playing for hours in the middle of the night. And my two month old sleep guide walks you through day and night confusion and how you can, um, fix that to get your little one sleeping well. Also, napping plays a big part with little ones. We don't have strict nap schedules, but there's a few things you can do to limit your little one's naps so that it encourages them to sleep better at night. So definitely hop on over to my two month old guide. Um, colic it can be really, 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 really frustrating. I will say that true colic, if your little one is, you know, crying excessively so three hours three days a week for three weeks or more that's the criteria for colic which is insane um you just have to do the best you can to like take care of yourself and and, and know that your baby will get through it but if it's just nighttime fussiness if it's just like like increased fussiness often that can be fixed with a schedule change and or um getting more sleep if you also, Fatima, if you want to hop on my website, check out my two month old sleep guide. But if you want to check out my newborn sleep guide, it explains the difference between colic, increased fussiness, and the witching hour. The witching hour is something that happens in usually in the evening, sometimes at night, um, usually more so in breastfed babies, um, and it's completely normal. So it'll walk you through the difference in those. So check out those two guides, and, and they'll give you a clear plan of how to move forward. Uh, but hang in there; it's going to get better. Julie Page, my two and a half year old started boycotting naps a few weeks ago with little signs. <laughs> now with the naps, down with the naps, sorry. <laughs> uh, boycotting, I love that word. She will nap a little at school, but at home on the weekends, she absolutely refuses. We've tried everything, even quiet rest time in bed. Well, she's clever, isn't she? Uh, Julie, hop on over to my website and there's a guide called how do you get your resistant toddler to nap? So definitely check that out. Um, She's following the trend at school and she's bucking the trend at home. So I would sit down with her during the day, like before nap time when she's happy and calm. And I would just chat to her and talk about naps and, you know, let her know your expectations that not if you nap today, but when you nap today, you know, you're going to, we're going to do this and this and this, and then you're going to have your nap. I'll come get you when it's done. And then we're going to do this and this and this, like gentle expectation. Um, not if you nap, you'll get a treat or anything like that. That's giving them the power. Instead, let her know your expectations, and then you really do have to stick with it. Continue to do quiet time, rest time in the crib, same time as nap time, same length. Uh, that can help. And then my guide also has other tips. You know, 
things about your day-to-day -day schedule and, and physical activity that can also help your little one. But also just have a conversation and let them know. We worked recently with a client, her little one just turned two and he was doing the exact same thing. And the mom just sat down with him and said, no, Alexander, you're gonna nap at home just like you do at school. You know, mommy says you're gonna nap, so you're gonna nap. I'm gonna let you know when the nap is over. Just kind of like had a frank conversation. And he went right back down to napping. So fingers crossed that works for you as well, but definitely check out our guide on getting resistant toddlers to nap. And I would say if they're younger than three, you should really continue to fight for the nap. At three to three and a half, then it's up to you whether it still works for your family, but most two year olds still need at least an hour to an hour and a half nap. All right, good luck. Danica, my 15 month old is taking an hour and a half to fall asleep at night. Started after I weaned him. We don't rock or touch him in the bed. We do a combo of cry it out and sitting next to him. Any tips for calming him faster? I would say to come up with one way to settle him. So maybe it could be that like you're doing sometimes cry it out and sometimes sitting in a chair. So maybe his, his inability to fall asleep or his resistance um, could be because you're changing things up. So we want real, real, real consistency when we're, when we're working with children basically in general, but especially with sleep training because it could be on some nights he falls asleep quite easily so you leave the room, but other nights he's kind of struggling and maybe he's kind of holding out and resisting whether consciously or not um, to see if you're gonna come back into the room. So what I would say is um, try to reduce the times that you're sitting next to him. So if you've been sitting next to him, you could slowly like push your chair towards the door or you could just go to where you're popping in and out of the room. But whatever you're doing, I would actually be consistent with it and moving toward you getting out of the room so that every night he's used to falling asleep on his own in the room. And you'll probably find that that helps. Um, the only other thing is just look at his schedule. He's 15 months old. So he's 15 months old. If he hasn't yet dropped down to one nap a day, he could be ready for that. So you can hop on over to Baby Sleep Made Simple and check out my guide on how to transition from two to one naps because uh, bedtime resistance is a big indicator that your little one's ready to drop down to one nap. Um, and consider doing that. If your little one is already on one nap a day, make sure it's ideally minimum two hours, up to three but not more. So a two to three hour nap, awake time should be four to five hours, maybe five and a half. You can check out my one year old sleep guide um, and my transitioning from two to one nap guides and between the two of them, they should give you an idea. And then as well as being consistent with how you handle bedtime. If you're doing everything in the guides and it's still happening, then I would say you definitely need to become consistent with how you handle bedtime because it could just be the inconsistency that's making him kind of um, stay awake longer. Okay, I hope that helps. All right guys, I have time for about two more questions. Laura Haddad, hi, what is the maximum awake time before bed for a nine month old baby? I love it. it's like pop quiz. Um, nine, nine and a half hours. <laughs> and they'll pass out, sorry, three and a half hours. <laughs> um, three and a half hours before your little one is asleep. So an awake time is literally the total amount of time that your little one is awake. So if they woke up at 3.30 and the max awake time is three and a half hours, they should be asleep at seven. Seven, yeah, that's the time they're asleep. So you need to factor that in with their bedtime routine and the time amount of time it takes them to fall asleep. Three and a half hours. One more question. Pooji Bot, I am trying to give sleep training to my 12 month old twin girls. What is the maximum time to let them cry in the middle of the night? Any tips for twins? Yes. Um, twins, most parents choose to sleep train at the same time, often in the same room and usually with the same method. And that method usually is like a Ferber because it's just easier. Um, here's the thing though, Pooji. And I get asked this question a lot, like, okay, what's the max time of crying before we give in? If you want to know the truth, we can't ever plan to give up. Because if we're already thinking in our heads, this is when I'm going to give in, this is when I'm going to give in, chances are it's not going to work. If that's already an option on the table. With sleep training, you have to be like, this is going to work and I'm going to stick with it and I know within a few days I'm going to see great, great improvements in my little one's sleep. So, really and truly, we don't like when clients ask me this, I don't say, okay, if you reach an hour or an hour and a half of crying, give in only because two things. Number one, if, if you do, and if you decide to start back tomorrow or three days from now, unfortunately, the terrible thing about it, because it's understandable why you would give in after an hour and a half of crying. I totally get it. But unfortunately, our little ones learned that was really, really weird what happened last night. But if I keep crying, eventually mom will come and feed me to sleep. So tonight when you try to start sleep training, they're gonna cry just as long, if not longer. 
So if it's the first night and if you're really struggling, you have to say, no, I have to, I have to make this work because if not and I give in, it's just gonna almost guarantee that the next time I try, they're gonna fight just as hard if not harder. So that's the first reason. Okay, that's, I think I pretty much summed it up. I could go on like other tangents, but I won't. So really and truly, Pooja, you just want to, yeah, whether it's bedtime, whether it's the middle of the night, make sure like your sleep training success, what's gonna set you up to have your best chance of success is having a clear plan of what you are going to do. Not, oh, I'm just gonna let them cry until they fall asleep. You have to have an exact plan. This is the method I'm doing. These are the steps I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do if my little one's crying really hard. This is what I'm gonna do if my little one stands up in the crib. This is what I'm gonna do if my little one is off and on crying. You need to be prepared for every single scenario so that you're like, oh, I knew this was gonna happen, so this is how I'm gonna respond. Because when you can do this, I'm, follow the steps of your plan and stay super consistent, you will see big improvements in the first few nights. So you have to have a plan. And that's not me just plugging my sleep training program. Like obviously you can join, we'd love to have you. We help twins all the time. But whatever you choose, whether it's FERB or whether, however you get like your sleep training plan, just commit to sticking to it. Because if you don't, it'll just be a wasted night with a lot of crying. Um, and, or it just guarantees your little ones are gonna resist that much the next time. So not a fun answer, but that's the answer that will get you like there the quickest. That's the truth of it. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, thank you guys for showing up. Seems like we had a good call today. Um, thanks for keeping up the faith in me. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. If you're really struggling, you can DM us and myself and my team will be happy to get back to you and give you some sleep training advice and guides and stuff. Um, yeah. Make sure to stay tuned this week on social media because we're going to be having lots of fun. <laughs> um, what else can I say? I hope you guys have a beautiful day and a lovely week. And I will see you all this time next Monday. Take care.